Good morning, everyone. Our opening song is out of the glory and praise, which is the larger book, number 503. 503, see us, Lord, about your altar. See us, Lord, about your altar, though so many we are one. Many souls by love united in the heart of Christ, your Son. Hear our prayers, O loving Father. Hear in them your Son, our Lord. Hear him speak our love and worship as we sing with one accord. Once were seen the blood and water, now is seen but bread and wine. Once in human form he suffered, now his form is but a sign. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. As we gather at this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the soul of Don McPherson, who will be buried from our parish today, for Biagio Joseph Letario, and the special intention for Manasseh and Danielle Nuala. For the times we fail to love God as we should, we bow our heads and ask for his mercy, for he is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at God's right hand. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the first book of Samuel. Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all of Israel and went to look for David and his men in the direction of the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheepfolds beside the road where there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the innermost parts of the cave. The men of David said to him, Here is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as it seems good to you. Then David went and stealthily cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. Afterward, David was stricken to the heart, because as he had cut off a corner of Saul's cloak, he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to raise my hand against him, for he is the Lord's anointed. So David scolded his men severely and did not permit them to attack Saul. Then Saul got up and left the cave and went on his way. Afterwards, David also rose up and went out of the cave and called after Saul, My lord, the king. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground and did obedience. And David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of the, those who say, David seeks to do you harm? This very day your eyes have seen how the Lord gave you into my hand in the cave, and some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not raise my hand against the Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, see the corner of your cloak in my hand. 
For by the fact that I cut off the corner of your cloak and did not kill you, you may know for certain that there is no wrong or treason in my hand. I have not sinned against you, though you are hunting me to take my life. May the Lord judge between you and me. May the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. As the ancient proverb says, Out of the wicked comes forth wickedness, but my hand shall not be against you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A single flea? May the Lord therefore be judge and give sentence between me and you. May he see to it and plead my cause and vindicate me against you. When David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, Is that your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I repaid you evil. Today you have explained how you have dealt well with me, and that you did not kill me when the Lord put me into your hands. For who has ever found an enemy and sent the enemy away safely? So the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. Now I know that you shall surely be king and that the Lord of Israel shall be established in your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, Lord, have mercy on me. God, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. God, have mercy. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me for that you, my soul, take refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until destroying storms pass by. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. I cry to God Most High, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame those who trample on me. God will send forth his steadfast love and his faithfulness. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be all over the earth, for your steadfast love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness extends to the clouds. Have mercy on me. God, have mercy. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God was in Christ to reconcile the world to himself, and the good news of reconciliation he has entrusted to us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went up the mountain and called to him those whom he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, to be with him and to be sent out to proclaim the message and to have authority to cast out demons. So Jesus appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boranages, that is, the sons of thunder, and Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the words of the Gospel, wipe away our sin. Amen. Yesterday, we heard of the jealousy of Saul. Today, God challenged David to see what his response was going to be. As Jonathan had informed him that his father was trying to kill him, David had the opportunity to take out his threat. Notice that David does somewhat succumb to the temptation, by cutting off some of his cloak, not only showed that he was disrespectful to Saul, 
but he was trying to show Saul and teach him a lesson, whereas if he had just left him alone, would have totally pleased God. So before we canonize David, we have to realize that the God was still working on him too. And yet, because of his response, it taught Saul a lesson. You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good where I have repaid you with evil. How many times in our lives has this happened to us? Where if we were truly honest with ourselves, we had a vendetta or an agenda against somebody, and while we may have taken it out on them, whether it was 100% or 5%, when they showed us true forgiveness, when they showed us compassion, did it send us into the same island of humility that it has done for Saul? Then, do such situations not inspire us to be compassionate and merciful ourselves? This experience and continued um, relationship between Saul and David helps us to realize the daily choices that we make too. God continues to give us opportunities of grace to not pretend to be holy, but to live holiness. How are we doing in such exchanges? How can you and I grow in our relationship with God to the point where we would not even cut off a corner of the cloak? That way, we can see that we have full control, full mastery over temptation, that no matter what happens, I'm not going to succumb to evil. I'm going to choose the higher road because I want to be seen as holy and righteous in the sight of God. And when we've been like Saul, are we willing to recognize our time to change, to change our approach, to change our attitude, and to be more like Christ? How can we be more like Christ in our daily lives? Let us place our petitions before God who calls us to new life with him. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all bishops and priests. May the Lord continue to bless and protect us and sanctify us for his kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all world leaders, may the Lord's peace and generosity guide them in their daily decision-making, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been wrongly or falsely imprisoned, may the Lord grant them justice and healing, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are sick who've asked for our prayers especially young Sienna, that Jesus, the divine physician, may heal them and set them free, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may the Holy Spirit continually renew and sustain us so that we can live lives that are holy and righteous in the sight of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who have died. We remember especially Don and Biagio, the holy souls in purgatory, and all who have died. May God's love and mercy surround them and bring them to his everlasting kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions we bring to God from the silence of our hearts. Father of love and mercy, you know our every need. We ask that you graciously hear our prayers and answer them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. By Jesus' mercy. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Biagio, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one of the ministers of Russian. Remember also, brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, 
we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood, from all our sins and from all that is evil, Keep us faithful to your commandments, and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. For those at home receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Governed by your Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Good Saint Joseph, ever watchful guardian of the Holy Family, protect the chosen people of Jesus Christ. Keep us free from the blight of error and corruption, and be our ally in the conflict with the powers of darkness. As of old, you rescued the child Jesus from the plots of Herod. So now defend the universal church from all harm. Keep us one and all under your continual protection, so that by your help and example, we may lead a holy life, die a happy death, and come to possess eternal life in heaven. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. The funeral Mass for Don McPherson takes place today at 11. Wheat and grape contain the meaning, food and drink he is to all. One in him we come adoring, gathered by his loving call. Hear us yet, so much is needful in our frail, disordered life. Stay with us and tend our weakness till that day of no more strife. Members of his mystic body, now we know our prayer is heard, heard by you because your children have received the eternal word. God bless you. Have a good day.